Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth here. So I wanted to do this video in regards to how to logically perceive messages from God. So even if you're not comfortable using the word God, whether you believe in the divine or the universe, that's completely up to you. But I know from different spiritual communities and philosophies and thought processes, everybody has a different perspective on whether or not, um, you know, these messages come from God. Um, sorry about that. And, um, you know, the, some of the Christian communities that I've been involved with, some of them do not believe that you can get messages or signs from God um, that are from nature and things like that. I definitely disagree with that because I believe that we are all interconnected. Um, humans are connected to nature, not only for restoration, but for survival and food and for shelter. And we must need, you know, we need the sun. If we don't have the sun, we don't have food and we don't have life on planet Earth. So I believe there is an interconnection and, um, you know, that signs and things like that can definitely come from various different means. But the thing is, we need to understand that a lot of signs are very logical and some of them are just so subtle and soft that a lot of times people want to think that some sign or miracle from God is going to be this great divine thing that, you know, is it, it's going to look like a Hollywood movie where, you know, the, the clouds are going to open up and the waters are going to, you know, split in so we can walk through and you know, maybe maybe back in the day those things did happen. Right now, we're entering a very logical time period uh, on planet Earth with the rise of technology and intellect through the growth of the age of Aquarius. And so I am an Aquarius sun. I have a Virgo moon. So I'm very, very logical. And I think a lot of these signs come through very logical means and methods that aren't anything super nuts um, <clears throat> that you would see in a Hollywood movie. That's like a fantasy. So I do want to read to you the parable of the flood because that's a very important story that will help understand how, you know, just God sends these messages through and to us. So a terrible storm came into a town and local officials sent out an emergency warning that the riverbanks would soon overflow and flood the nearby homes. They ordered everyone in the town to evacuate immediately. A faithful Christian man heard the warning and decided to stay, to stay, saying in to himself, I will trust God, and if I am in danger, then God will send a divine miracle to save me. The neighbors came to his house and said, Hey, we're leaving, and there's room for you in the car. Please come with us. But the man declined. I have faith in God. He will save me. As the man stood on his porch watching the water rise up the steps, a man in a canoe paddled by and called to him, Hurry and come into my canoe. The waters are quickly rising. But the man again said, No thanks. God will save me. The flood waters rose higher, pouring into his living room, and the man had to retreat to the second floor. A police motorboat came by and saw him at the window and said, Hey, we will come up and rescue you, they shouted. The man refused, waving them off, saying, Use your time to save someone else. I have faith that God will save me. The flood waters rose higher and higher, and the man had to climb up to his roof. A helicopter spotted him and dropped a rope ladder. A rescue officer came down the ladder and pleaded to the man, Grab my hand, I will pull you up. But the man still refused, folding his arms to his tightly to his body, said, No, thank you, God will save me. Shortly after, the house broke up and the flood water swept the man away and he drowned. When in heaven, the man stood before God and asked, I put all of my faith in you. Why did you not come and save me? God looked at him and said, Son, I sent you a warning. I sent you a car. I sent you a canoe. I sent you a motorboat. I sent you a helicopter. What more were you looking for? So this is just so important because... You know, a lot of times when we're ignoring signs and messages, they will continue to come up and happen to help steer you on the right path. And I love that parable or that story because so many people, especially spiritual people, do believe in God and spirit, but they have a hard time helping certain things. So one thing I will say is, you know, like somebody who is about to suffer from diabetes or pre-diabetes. Their doctor is telling them, if you don't change your ways, you will become diabetic. I saw this a lot with my ex-in-laws. They, you know, kept saying, God will 
save my health in paradise, um, but they refuse to change their ways here on the earthly plane. And, you know, so many messages uh, are, are just, everything is just logical. We are living here on the earth plane, so, you know, a piece of paper floating by that says you are enough might just be the sign that you need at a point when you're about to commit suicide. You know, it's like sometimes these divine little funny things happen and there's no really rhyme or reason to them. It's just there are messages being sent to help us on our path. So some logical ways that you can perceive uh, messages from God is one, through people, and the second, through feelings of uneasiness. So I kind of combine these two because a lot of people are friends and our loved ones have an outside perspective and perception that helps us. You see this a lot in dating. Um, say a guy meets a girl, the, you know, the girl really likes the guy, but there's just something uneasy with inside of her that knows that he's not really a right person or that all these things that he does to her that's really selfish or whatever is kind of draining her inside. But you can also hear from the family and friends that it's not necessarily they don't like the guy, they just don't think he's right for her. So these people are providing a perspective in addition to that feeling of uneasiness, which is kind of coupled with your intuition. Using your intuition is a third way of kind of logically perceiving a sign on something. If something doesn't feel right, or it feels um, maybe something does feel right, those are definitely signs and messages to kind of follow that intuitive guidance. You know, when you get a gut feeling that something is off or it's wrong, that you have to trust in that. The truth will come out, the truth will be exposed, but you have to know that probably something, if something is off, you know that something is off. And you see this a lot in marriages, you know, they always say, a woman's intuition is one of the most amazing things. It's because, you know, a lot of times women have caught their men cheating on, or their husbands or whatever, cheating on them. And it all started with that intuitive guidance that they were getting inside of them that something was off or wrong. So using your intuition is, is a necessary sign that you need to understand if something or someone or whatever is right or nice for you. Even you get a job offer, you're like, this doesn't really feel that right. Then most likely it's not the right job for you. Um, so God uses people. God uses feelings of uneasiness. God sends you messages through your intuition. Your intuition is the gateway to your higher self and your soul. Um, when your soul is crying, Inside, that is something that you really need to focus on because that's not even a message. That's almost a siren from your higher self, your soul, the divine God, the universe. I see this a lot with corporate people. They just get to this breaking point and the boiling point. They're like, I just can't do this anymore. Like my soul is crying inside. I can't handle this toxic work environment. And sometimes you have that in a relationship, a relationship that's so unhealthy or toxic, like something inside of you is like, I need to break up with this person. It's because your soul knows better. And that is a divine message that you should not ignore. Um, God also uses symbolism. You know, he can use symbolism through numbers, through nature, um, through people at the grocery store, you could be having a horrible, horrible day at the grocery store. And, um, you know, you might just hear a random note from a stranger, um, or a message from a stranger, or they might compliment you on something and that might uplift your day. Or, you know, I've been through these points where I'm kind of like, I have no clue where I'm going. What do I do? Do I stay in the city? Do I leave? Like I need to start. My soul is crying. And, um, you know, a bus will blow by me while I'm thinking this thoughts and the bus number is 4333. So I'm a very logical person with my little Virgo moon now. And I'm math and science based person too. So a lot of how I understand numbers and interpretations of things like angel numbers is, um, you know, common in the spiritual communities, but maybe a little bit more uncommon for some people. But whenever I see the threes or the triple threes, you know, it's that union between mind, body, soul that I either have a little bit of thinking to do or that to some degree that I'm being protected by, um, you know, divine forces and divine energy. 
And a lot of Christians, they don't think that we're interconnected with nature. I mean, I've heard this where, you know, some Christians don't think animals have souls because the Bible doesn't say it. There's definitely a difference between Christian faith and Christian, uh, you know, like legalism of being super hardcore on a Bible thumper. But, you know, I've been with, like, I had a friend, she and I have been through a lot in life. We were just taking a walk the other day in Fremont talking about her growth and progress and you know what there you know is a bald eagle soaring above or I've been at moments of contemplation on my life or um you know when my ex-husband was splitting up with me I was like what is going on and then I look outside and there's you know like two bald eagles just like spiraling around the apartment and stuff like that so to some degree you know and, and a lot of Native American uh cultures they believe that bald eagles are messengers from god because they are one of the most powerful birds on this planet so you know there is a lot of symbolism and i would say even something like swans you know swans are beautiful creatures but they're ultra fucking deceiving as well and i remember at a time when i was like kind of dating someone in 2018 not even dating it's just like he kind of dangled the carrot in front of me and another person's face and i kept hearing about things about swans then <laughs> and then i read a little bit about swans and how like beautiful they are and they're kind of like deceptive and i was like you know what i was like it kind of kind of has a little bit of you know pertinence to my uh to that specific situation so don't go looking for you know Jesus to walk on water in front of you yeah we all have psychic visions I have them or we all have an intuition where we can have psychic visions or intuitions or things like that and in the blog link below I did write um, a blog about this topic and I do share some examples like one person, um, she was struggling financially and she was just like kind of put, casting out her thoughts through a lot of worries, like how am I going to pay the bills? And randomly, a couple hours later, somebody knocks on her door, which is a friend from a local pet group and dropped off some bags of food because she knew she was going through a hard time and, you know, and, and gave her a gift card. And it's like, what a powerful gift from the divine and from God that he used another person who is doing all right in her life to help someone else who's struggling. So those are just amazing things. I share some examples in the blog link below. But if you have any thoughts about this topic, I'd love to hear from you or your perspective, whether you think it's bullshit or if you think it's, you know, there's truth to it. Um, I think that I'm open-minded enough to know that everything that I believe in could be wrong. Um, but, you know, we all go through life living through our own truths. So just notice the things that are around you, whether it's a song on the radio, um, if you're going through a hard time or things like that. I mean, I've had that where I was like dwelling on the past about, you know, relationship problems or whatever. And um, then a song comes on the radio that talks about um, let the past be the past, move on, don't regret it, but let it go and move on. And so it's like, okay, you know, getting the message. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Life purpose lesson here. So, um, yeah, I would love to hear your stories or just your thoughts in general. Um, if you can, you can help me build this channel. Please subscribe. Thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing. If you believe in my voice and my message, you can also support me on Patreon or do a donation. I don't make any videos off of, or money off of these videos. YouTube requires a thousand subscribers just to even start to monetize them. So I do this out of a labor of love. And thank you guys so much. Check out the blog links below and we'll talk soon. See you. Bye.